Alright, so I wanna start with few words of explanation. As you can see, I'm level 12, so that basically means I completed the last boss already 12 times. And the reason why you don't see really the playthroughs from me is that Dimir doesn't really have a good format for me to kinda do a video around it. Simply because the sessions are on average from 1 hour to 2 hours if we're talking about the whole campaign of the Elven Queen. But instead, what I wanted to do is some sort of a special interaction kinda tips and tricks compilation that I learned during multiplayer I just discovered the mechanic. So I think this is gonna be a recurring series when the developers will be introducing new cards, new campaigns, new environments like gradually because then there's gonna be more stuff happening that you have to kind of like learn by playing. It's not very apparent through the explanation from tutorial or stuff like that. We're gonna do skirmish. I never did actually skirmish and I'm not sure how it's gonna work. What I'm hoping is to get every interaction that I know in this run. That way I will just have a solid video of my kind of experience from Demia. So my main character will be sorcerer. It's not in the multi play mode because I prefer archer or tank. But sorcerer has like the most amount of interactions pretty much and seems like I got my preferred setups. Okay. I think in skirmish is that you control the, all the characters but if you're talking about the cards in general everyone gets cards but in the shop at the end of each level you can only buy the ones you control from the main character. I'll be pretty much just skipping everything I get to the point of the video. So first interaction is when you have poison gas fields basically. The game doesn't explain you but it's flammable meaning the sorcerer can throw a fireball in that direction and everything will just explode. It's pretty good planning like how the poison spreads because it's actually the most handy controlling fields in the game because it spreads like each turn or every two turns, I'm not sure, and can really cover large areas. Going by that logic, I thought that the zap from the sorcerer will light up the gas as well, but no, it's just fireball that works with it. Giant slime spawns those little slimelings, right? When two of the same ones are like next to each other, they can form a giant slime as well by simply just morphing into one. The thing that's called bottle of lie, essentially it's something that if you throw a regular enemy, it will just cause poison and that's pretty much it. But when you throw it at the giant slime, it actually kills him instantly. Here we go, and the slime is gone. It's very handy, especially that it doesn't waste the action points. It's cost zero as other potions. As well as if you don't want a card, you can discard them for additional mana and then you can gather the points towards the other cards as well. Essentially, Archer's job is to be on a high ground because that way you can shoot large areas. For example, if you're like here, you won't be able to hit him because he's too high. So it's always good to be like up. So potion mechanics is that healing potion, of course, heals you, but it can as well bring you from the down stat when you reach zero hit points so basically it can like revive you even though it's not specified on the card as well as strength potion usually it just adds one damage more to your melee or like ranged attacks but when you use it on the sorcerer even though it specifies on the card that it enhances your melee attacks it works on zap so when you want to attack someone from the distance for example let's do the slamming here it should do okay it's a crit so it's do, gonna do four yeah essentially the crit doubles that but it would be two on a normal roll but for on crit so not only it does like you know more melee damage but also it works on spell particularly that one i don't think on the fireballs or freezes we'll finish the level it's pretty straightforward every grade gives you a certain amount of xp first level 150 second 350 and the boss fight 500 so we can only buy spells for the wizard i still need like an interaction with one card more with the hound but we should get it from the chest i think i mean maybe it's an obvious interaction but when you throw like a lamp and then shoot at it specifically oil lamp then it's gonna just do a chain reaction and detonate through fire and poison then. Here we go, we have an example of just bringing ally with a health potion. This might be interesting as well. So basically ice lamp and the free spell from the sorcerer, they do like an area of effect kind of spell. Look at it. My aim is... <laughs> And now we have a frozen status. Essentially what it means, it says extra vulnerable to attack. So whenever you attack, you know, a monster with that status, it's just gonna get extra damage. It didn't say because it died right away, but what it doesn't say about the status is that it's gonna actually freeze the character, meaning it's gonna skip a turn. You won't be able to interact as a hero or an enemy won't move or attack. So summon elementals are cool as well. Basically summons a friendly elemental to fight with you. But there's a chance, I don't know how percentage wise, let's say five or 10% to spawn an elite elemental which has higher attack and higher HP. I don't know concretely when it happens. I only saw two elites in the whole journey with Dimio so it's slow but it's possible. Too yeah as well as the elementals <laughs> explode when you kill them just like this pulse. 
If you attack someone on the poison field, it takes extra damage from the actual attack. For some reason, it just works like that. Okay, let's go. And finish with this level. <laughs> so, I didn't get one card that I wanted, but the card is called Bone, and there's an enemy called Ghost Hunt or something like that. It's like a zombie doggy where you throw this bone to him and then he will become friendly as an ally for you. Instead, it will just do one damage to some enemy. He will fight for you in the battles. We have few lamps in the team, so I'm gonna show you the power of Vortex. First of all, I need to find the queen. <laughs> we have like no allies, which normally it's pretty weird because in the multiplayer there will be just like packed here of things. She can be like in the three corners, here, here or here. Usually she doesn't appear near the chest, so it really depends on the randomizer. As well as I don't have an assassin in team, there is this tactic with coin flip. It's basically a card that either one shots the enemy or misses completely. I think it's 50-50 chance, but I'm not sure how the game calculates that. It's pretty much the most overpowered card in the game because it just ends bosses like that with no tactics, no whatsoever, just pure RNG. Reveal path won't work here even though the queen has a key and we have like a chest. It does nothing at the end of the day, so it's better to discard it or sell. Actually, I have detect enemies. Okay, I'll do that just to know where the queen Okay, so she's here. That's actually gonna be a good occasion to show off kind of like the tactics for her. So those things that you see, yeah, the unhurts, you have to destroy first because they make enemies invulnerable, so they take no damage at all, and they usually use those abilities for the boss, meaning it's pretty much the first target that you go for in the boss stage. Completely annihilate the floor. <laughs> I literally blocked myself off with this fucking ward. Like, there's no tile here to walk on. I wish there would be something transparent to actually, like, verify, because for me, it seems like I can walk, but apparently not, so that's just weird. I'll snipe the unhurt first, and the queen should walk, like, soon. Okay, here she is. We do, first of all, a vortex here. And the center of the fireball actually deals 10 damage like a card specifies. But the area of effect like in the other corners is only 5. That's just fun facts to know when you're aiming spells at enemies. Not everyone's gonna take the same damage unless it's gonna be a crit. A crit does 12 damage all over. No immunity. Ah, oh, goddammit. I'm gonna do something risky that I don't know if it's a good idea to try. <laughs> Let me teleport here. Adventure. <laughs> That's actually amazing. You're having a walkthrough of the queen boss, just by the way. <laughs> oh wait, there's one unheard. I didn't see this. Please don't immune her. Oh my god. I wanna blow these things up here. Nice, okay, lovely. We don't have any unheard, so it's gonna be easier to kill her noise. Actually, nice. Let me do a invulnerability potion. <laughs> and I'll punch her to the punch. A crit punch. <laughs> Okay, I wanna revive my archer just for one shot or something. One more shot and crit. Bye bye! Take that. Nice! So with conflict it would be just instantly. You can literally do this boss fight in one turn, which is crazy. You were Yay! Would I unlock on the 13? A new mask, but... Beach and butcher. Okay. I think I did most of the interactions that I remember. If something I'll forget, because I'm pretty sure I will forget at least one or two, I don't know. Because there's just a lot. Like there's some basic interactions and there's more advanced that you discover while you're playing. If you remember something else or you know something else, please write in the comments. Like I want this to be like a center of information. Like that's just my main purpose on my channel. Dimi is just so much fun for me. I play it literally every day, at least one session. That's why I'm 13 level. <laughs> Even though I'm doing videos in the meantime, like this is my main game to go to when I have any time to spare. I'm not gonna do like, you know, a lot of videos from this game, but series of this kind will pretty much suffice for now. So I think next time will be with the Rat King patch, so can't wait for that.